Welcome to Go for Lunch number 47. We're doing a different format this week. Our program is Cable Untangle, and so that participants could show the cables they were wondering whether they should keep or recycle, we did this as a Zoom meeting, which you're going to see here following this. So thanks for joining us, and here is Go for Lunch. Number 47. Hi, Judy. So we're going to have a fun time today with cables. Floor is covered with spaghetti. Hopefully we'll fix that. Okay. So today we're going to look in our cable boxes and save the cables we want and recycle the cables we no longer need. It will be fun. What happened to YouTube? Well, I can't see you on YouTube, Sherm. The whole idea is to Hold up your cable so we can identify it and decide whether you need it. <coughs> it's a sharing and caring kind of go for lunch today. And it's all Alexis's fault. So. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that Alexa. <laughs> Alexis. Yes, so we don't uh, trigger our voice assistant by a similar name. And Bob. Well, <clears throat> to, uh, to borrow something, borrow something out, of out of Bob's, Bob's, Bob's playbook, playbook. Um, this will be the Suez Canal opening edition of Go for Lunch. Looks like Anne has got her cables already to uh, show us. So um, Alexis pointed out that um, if you have a uh, virtual background on, your cables probably will not show up. So you may have to turn off your background to show your cables. Show me your cables. Of course, Roger, you're going to tell us what to do with all the ones we aren't going to use anymore. Exactly. Let's not throw them away. No, we are not throwing anything away today. We are recycling, and I'll tell you exactly how to and where to do that. Okay, well, it is high noon, and welcome to a special edition of Go for Lunch. This is number 47. And we are going to talk about cables today, or uh, I should say connectors, which are connected to cables, of course. So the cables are pretty much the same. It's what's on the ends that we're going to, uh, to look at today. So maybe you have something like this, a bag full of cables, or perhaps a box with a bunch of cables that you don't know what to do with. Now, some of us may have our cables organized in little boxes with nice little labels. Believe it or not, all three of these pictures came from the same place. I'll let you figure out where that place is. So uh, while we're getting uh, organized, seeing if anybody else is coming in, um, open your chat box. If you don't know where your chat box is, it should be either on the top or bottom of your screen. And it says chat, C-H-A-T. So that's where you'll be able to ask um, questions. So I'll be keeping an eye on the chat box and I will be pausing 
in between the sections of various kinds of connectors so that we can um, ask questions. And Bob has proven that the chat is working. So great. So this is the great cable untangle. And I know many of us have boxes full of cables that we not sure we should get get rid of what maybe I'll need these someday, maybe your pack rat gene is in uh, in full play. So let's let Judy come in here. So um, we want to go from this to something that's more organized and more beneficial and uh, allowing those cables you don't need to go to somebody else that can use them. So we're going to we're going to talk about four uh, kinds of cables today if we we have time I do have a dental appointment at one o'clock so um, I do have kind of a hard out on this so if you think I'm uh, moving fast it's because I am. So let's talk about USB cables, those are probably the ones that are most uh, prevalent they're used for. Uh, your keyboard, your mouse, your hard drives, all sorts of peripherals that you uh, connect to your computer. So the one with the type of connector that we're most familiar with is the USB-A. It's been around for a long time and I'll have pictures of all these uh, lots of different pictures so you can identify them. So now we have the USB-C, which uh, started in, in 2016 on MacBooks, uh, was the only connector that was available. On I, I uh, Max, you still have the USB-A, but you also have, on the newer ones, you have the USB-Cs. And I would guess on the new M1 iMax that we expect to have coming out this year, you probably will see more USB-Cs and fewer USB-As, if any at all. Then we have the micro USB. Are we confused yet? We have the micro USB, which is used for almost anything these days. It has a rechargeable battery. Uh, it's used for headsets, speakers, uh, battery packs, all sorts of things that uh, you have to recharge. And then we have a variation of that is the micro B and that's on your newer USB 3.0 hard drives and we'll again have diagrams and pictures of all of these. And then the one that uh, you can probably throw out unless you have a camera or some other device that requires this older style USB mini cable. So that'll be a candidate for recycling unless you meet the uh, camera criteria. And then we have, as if we needed any more kinds of cables, we have a USB-B, which is commonly used on printers. And we also see it on our OWC drives that we use for time machine backups. So just to get oriented here, we have two USB-A cables there on the left, and for comparison's sake, a USB-C cable on the far right. So you can see it's much smaller. This is one of the reasons it's become popular with manufacturers because it takes up less space uh, inside the device so they can make things thinner and smaller and more compact. Again, another close-up picture of the USB-C. The, the, the advantage of the USB-C is it can go in either way. Uh, unlike the USB-A, which would only go one way, USB-C, you can turn it 180 degrees and make a connection. So here's the close-up so you can tell the difference. So we're going to have uh, several different views of this so you can really understand what cables you have and what ones that you may want to recycle. So starting from the top left, that's the USB micro. 
and so again, that's one that's used for batteries, uh, anything that's rechargeable, speakers, things like that. To the right of that is a variation, as you can see on the right of that connector. It's the same connector, but then it has a little add on because this is used for uh, USB 3.0 devices, which are faster. So they need more connections between the computer and the device. So that has that little add on. Back to the left column, we have the USB mini. So that's the older style connector works on cameras and some other older devices. Below that we have the uh, USB B. Um, not a mini, but a regular B. And that one is almost on every printer and a few other devices and then on our OWC hard drives we have a variation of that uh, again because it has more connectors that's a USB B but a little different shape and then here we have the old-fashioned USB A and then there's a faster version of the USB A supposedly you can tell the difference by the blue plastic insert on the USB A 3.0 and then the white plastic insert on the USB A um, 2.0. But those are pretty much interchangeable. So here's a Bob uh, gave me this. Thanks, Bob. So this kind of gives you a real um, a good comparison. And these are uh, at, uh, they are to scale. So you can tell here's the, uh, the old fashioned USB A in, in front with the gray area is the plastic insert, the USB B for printers, then the newer USB A was supposedly would have a blue plastic insert, but you can see here that it has more connections. And then we go down, this is the uh, new USB, which again has more connections here on top, the USB mini and then the USB A. Now you're not going to see too many of of these connectors, the USB Mini B, but the USB Mini A is very prevalent. And then uh, in, in the uh, as far as older devices for cameras and things. And then you have a squared off micro, which you won't see very many of those. The most common one will be this one that has the the uh, beveled corners here that's the micro and again the micro b with the extra connector connectors there so so again just to make it real clear so another picture showing the ends of the cables so we have the does everybody understand this Did anybody have any questions about which usb is which yep Hopefully this will clear that up. So the mini USB on the left is the older style. The USB B is the um, one that is used for printers and, and OWC hard drives. The USB C is the connector of today and tomorrow. The uh, micro will live on in devices that have rechargeable batteries mostly. And of course, we'll still see that USB A, the older style connector, uh, for for a while. And so it's hard to tell because these guys, these mini and micro connectors, are so small. So I think this is a good um, close up. The older style mini for cameras on the left of the left picture, and the newer style micro on the right, which will be one that you want to keep around. And then again, just looking at them straight on the micro, the newer style and the mini, the older style they're on the right. So have I confused you enough or do you have any questions? So Susan wants to know, why can't we just talk? You can talk, Susan. Just unmute your mic and talk to us. Thank and, you. Uh, uh, Judy uh, says, where is the USB mini used? So the USB mini is 
uh, that older connector, let's back up here. The USB mini here on the left is, if you have an older camera, that would be the main place that that would be used or an older device. So just check your, your cameras and see if that, it has that lar little larger connector there. And that would be where you would use a USB mini. Could we have your pictures? Could we have a copy of the pictures? Uh, yes, I could send you copies of this. Um, I could send you my keynote presentation that would have everything that you're seeing. Wonderful. It... Okay. Yeah, Roger, it'd be good. Uh, the pictures are great. It would be good to have a verbal description of what all of them go to and what's old and what's new. Okay. That's yeah. a good idea. So, um, I can't promise when I'll get this done, but what I'll do is I'll just do a spreadsheet um, in numbers that I can put in the pictures and then I can put a description right next to it. And that'll be easy to uh, to send to everyone. So good idea, Anne, thank you. Good. You got any other questions before we move on? I could put the two um, images that I sent to you, Roger, into the chat and then they could have them right away oh great idea okay so bob is gonna you're gonna see those diagrams here in a second um but he will throw those in the chat and you can have those um and then you can you know make your own notes on them right now to uh to uh, get by until i get a more formal document for you with descriptions next to the pictures Okay, so if you no longer have a camera, you can definitely disregard the mini USBs because that would probably be the only thing that uh, that would work on. Good morning, Carolyn. So let's move right along here and look at video cables. So the the main cable that you'll deal with, deal with for video is called the HDMI. <coughs> so that's going to be on your flat screen television sets. You'll have uh, usually at least two up to maybe four HDMI connections on your TV set. And that's so you can connect uh, different devices like DVD players. Your Apple TV will use an HDMI connector. Uh, things like that. And then a lot of monitors have um, HDMI connectors as well. I get all choked up just talking about this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> then uh, we have the mini display port which uh, we had on our older uh, pre uh, 2015 and older uh, MacBooks and I, uh, iMacs. And then we have a DVI, which makes no sense to anybody right now, but you'll see pictures here in a minute. And then the older connector, which is uh, all these uh, above here are, di are digital, which means they send a digital signal and a digital signal is higher quality than a analog signal is what the VGA uh, connector did. So Bob has put the uh, two of the uh, diagrams in the chat so you can download those just by clicking on the, the icon. And then we have the coax connector with which has the F connector on it. And if you've ever dealt with one of these coax connectors, you know what the F stands for. Hmm. So here are the common video connectors. These are not to scale because the mini display port is smaller than all the rest of these. But that'll give you an idea. This is it only connects one way because it has this little bevel on the corners. Then there's uh, the 
granddaddy of the mini display port, the display port. And then here's your HDMI. Again, goes in, in only one way because of the bevel. And then the uh, DVI, there's several different styles of DVI. Most of the ones you'll will see will be this one on the left. So you'll, on, on a monitor, uh, you will have um, maybe two or three or four different connectors. So you might have an HDMI, a VGA, a uh, DVI, and the other one that you might have is a, um, a USB-C now on newer monitors will have USB-C. So um, those are what those, those look like. So here we have some common display interfaces. Now, the ones that I do not mention, you don't need to worry about because you are most likely not going to encounter those. Starting in the first column, we have the old-fashioned VGA, which you may have on an older monitor, a video projector, things like that. Then you also may see on monitors the DVI, and there's several var variations of those. So that's a digital video connector. This VGA is analog. So if you have a choice, choose the DVI because it has better quality. Moving to the second column, this is the standard HDMI prevalent on your flat screen TVs. And uh, you will see it on a Mac Mini. Then they have many versions of the HDMI, and these will be seen primarily on DSLR and mirrorless cameras. They're trying to save space, so they are using the mini and micro HDMI to export your stills and videos from your cameras. And then here in the third column, uh, display port, again, you may see on a monitor. Then you have the mini display port, which is prevalent on Macs 2015 and older. And it also will carry a Thunderbolt signal. So Thunderbolt can be used for monitors and um, external hard drives. And then we have the new USB-C that we've been talking about. So this is replacing the mini display port on MacBooks starting in 2016. And again, it can transport different protocols. So this will be used for monitors, for external hard drives, for almost any other kind of peripheral in the present and will be more prevalent in the future because it is the new standard. And here is the F connector used from the connector in your wall. Then we, if your house was pre-wired for cable television to your cable modem that takes the signal and brings in your TV and your internet. Okay, any questions on video connectors? Okay, let's look at another category of cables, and that is audio cables. So this is actually going to be audio and older style video cables. So the most common audio cable is called the RCA cable. We'll take a picture of that and put it on the screen in a minute. But the color code is something to be aware of. So you're going to have uh, RCA cables that are just one connector. You're going to have RCA cables that have a red and a white. Red is for right channel. White is for left channel. And then you're going to have RCA connectors that have three cables. The third one will be yellow, and that is for video. So this is an older uh, style of transferring audio and video from a like a dvd player to your television set 
Then for higher quality, uh, again, this is an older uh, technology that's not being used much anymore. You would have an RGB cable, which simply stands for red, green, and blue. And that gave you better quality video than this single yellow video cable. And then uh, all your newer uh, TV sets don't actually have audio cables. They have optical cables to give you audio output, which is fine if you have a newer, like a, um, a speaker that you want to connect to improve your audio from your TV set, which is always a improvement because the speakers and TV sets, because they're so thin, are not very good. So if you have a, a speaker that is connected to your TV set, it will probably have an optical input. So it's no problem. But if you want to connect some other things like headphones, uh, you have to convert this optical toss link um, to an, from which is digital using light actually. And you have to get a little box to convert that to an analog connector. So you can plug in your either an eighth inch connector, which is the uh, the common connector we see, or a, a quarter inch connector, which is, you know, used for guitars and, and uh, musical instruments and things of that nature. So here we have the pictures of the good old fashioned RCA cable. So you can see on the top left, you have the white which is the left channel, the red, which is the right channel, and the yellow, which is the video. So these can come either as one cable, a pair, or all three together in the same bundle. On the top right, we have the RGB, red, green, blue, and that's for the higher quality video, but not used that much anymore. But this is the modern way of getting audio out of your TV set these little red caps are protectors to protect the delicate uh, light uh, conducting components inside. So this is actually a fiber optic cable that conducts light. So that is kind of your recap of the common audio cables. So how can we organize all of these cables? Well, we could use what is commonly called hook and loop, but we call it, probably call it Velcro, but it's called hook and loop because they didn't want to pay Velcro the license fee. So this is counterfeit Velcro in most cases. So you can buy this. Uh, um, I'm going to give you a source for this in the description uh, on YouTube when I put this uh, video up on YouTube, which will take a couple days because I'll have to edit edit the recording. And um, but it's very inexpensive. It's like four or five dollars for five yards. So you can use this in two ways. You can use it to uh, organize the cables in your spare cable box, and keep them nice and coiled and and untangled. But you can also use it to bundle your cables coming out of your computer or your TV set so that they are nice and neat and not all over the place. Or you could use, wait, where, where'd that come from? When I was researching this, I couldn't believe that somebody is still selling Dynamo labelers. By a show of hands, how many people remember these handy devices? Right. And uh, some of you may have heard me say when I'm trying to set up your printer to connect to your Wi-Fi network, oh, we have the Dynamo labeling system. Because on many printers, you can only click on one letter at a time to type in the Wi-Fi password. Same concept. Uh, interesting fact, the uh, company that is still selling this is not selling the label material. So I don't know where you get that. But I would definitely recommend something more like this. So Dynamo has pivoted. They've caught up with modern times. 
Uh, and this is a label maker. You're probably familiar with the brother label makers that look very much like this. And they print on a little uh, sheet or a little uh, tape exactly like this. And the, the, the place that you should use that is, let's show our screen here. So um, we all get these devices and they come with these black power supplies or they come with a what we call the the wall warts the little transformers that plug you know directly into the wall and then we we move or we rearrange our desk and we unplug everything and we go back to plug things back in and we look at this and say oh well, what does this go to well nine times out of ten or maybe 99 times out of a hundred the brand name of the device this connects to is not on the device. They use a generic supplier because they're, how do we say this, cheap. And uh, so the, the big reason to have a labeler or to label these things, as soon as you unpack them out of the box, don't wait, don't plug it in before you label it, is you get your labeler out and you put a label on it so then you know what it is from then on and of course a little late to tell us that <laughs> well <laughs> sorry so if you don't if you don't want to get a labeler you can use um uh, i like to use the blue painter's tape and a sharpie as another way of doing it so make sure you you know you write it so that somebody else can understand it so that is a big reason that you might want to use your labeler. Okay, any questions about what we've talked about? Okay, let's jump back in and talk about where should I take this stuff? And you should take it to the keeper of the grumper now it's got an odd name but they're doing a great job it's a um, 501 c3 foundation so you can get a tax deduction for anything you take over there they are located centrally at 3219 north first avenue just north of fort lowell on the west side of first avenue and they are open by appointment. So because of the uh, situation we're in, they only want, you know, one person, one customer there at a time. So they set up an appointment on their website. So their website is not that. That's not their website. Their website is... Um, Keeper of the Grumper dot org, and I will type that in the comments right now, so you can just copy it. So this is um, run by a foundation, and they um, fund leadership programs for young people. And so the young people work here and learn skills of um, keeper of the grumper. And you can ask them what that means when you go over there. It's a great story. Okay, I think that's right. So there it is in the chat. You can just copy that, go to their website, and uh, you can click on the website and they'll show you the appointment times that are available and you can click on one and they will be there with open arms and they will help you carry stuff from the car if you like roger do they do more than cable recycling or whatever they do with this stuff like if you have a computer you're no longer using do they take that good question ann let's just do this shall we let's go to that 
website, which pops right up on my Safari like type in ke so let's go to the share the screen and we want to there we go okay so can you see the website uh -huh. yes okay so if we click up here on the top where it says electronics recycling and let's see if i can zoom in to make that bigger there we go so here's what they recycle computers computer hardware computer software keyboards mouses point of sale equipment wi-fi routers speakers printers screens cables video games dvds hard drives sewer no that's server and networking equipment and related electronics so almost anything that you have they will take and uh, i was there uh Jim Riley is the kind of the advisor for the for the uh, group, and I was there the other day, and they had a big selection of locks, so they are open to anything that they think that uh, people might want to buy. They sell this stuff in their store there, but they also um, sell it on eBay. And that's why on the question slides, I had the boxes because they will also take your boxes. So if you feel guilty about throwing all those boxes away, um, you can just put your stuff in the boxes, just put one thing in each box and take them all over and they like to have those boxes as well. So that is that. So we have a new little feature here that I wanted to tell you about. And that is buy me a coffee. So that is a way that you can help support the information that I provide for you every week. So if you go to buymeacoffee.com slash Roger Harmon, um, that would help defray the expense because doing this costs money and i'm glad to do it glad to uh, help everybody that i can and uh, it would be great to have a little assistance so this is a question would you like to talk about what electronics that you have laying around that you should recycle yes we can we can go in that and obviously um I can't guess at what you have. Cables was relatively easy compared to the very broad topic of electronics. So if you like, we will go through uh, what electronics you can recycle next week. And again, that will be a Zoom meeting because we can really do a show and tell on that one. Does anybody have any cables that they brought with them that they don't know exactly what they are? Go ahead, Ann. Okay, um, here I've got the background here. Okay, so those are the uh, DVI cables, so that would go to a monitor. But the chances are that um, so to connect that to a computer, you would have to get an adapter. So you, you can get an adapter that would be like an HDMI to DVI, and then you could use that um, that cable. But if your if your monitor is working and you don't have any other monitors, then you can probably recycle that. Good. That's that's a you know that's a monitor cable. You only deal with it once. You know when you actually. Um, you know, plug the monitor in and then, you know, it works. So anybody else have a cable they'd like to uh, find out what it is and whether to keep it or not? Okay, looks like Judy's looking for one. I've got one. Maybe. Okay, so Alexis has one and that's looking a lot like, oh, okay, good. I forgot to add those. So that is a Firewire 
800 cable. Okay. Not to be confused with a Firewire 400 cable. So a Firewire 400 cable is about that size and it has one end is is rounded and one end is squared. So that's the Firewire 400 cable. And then the newer one, which is you, you have there, is a Firewire 800 cable. So unless you have some hard drives that have those connectors on them, you can recycle those. If come back to this one, this is the end of it. OK, so called? that is uh, show me the other end. Before I drop it. OK, hey, there's a little is there a cable, a little cable connected to that? I don't have the cable. Oh, OK, so that is a uh, uh, iPad uh, or iPhone 30 pin uh, connector. So they haven't used those on iPhones and iPads. That was a unique cable from Apple. So unless you have a really old iPhone or a really old iPad, you can recycle that. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Roger. And, yes. I think these are all coaxial cables. Is hey, hold them up a little higher, Judy. They uh, all have. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, you're right. Those are all coaxial. Yeah. Thank so you, you only need. I mean, you, you should keep a couple of those around because they do break, and okay. so that's a good way to troubleshoot if your cable TV service and your cable internet's not working. You could substitute the cable, you know, after okay. you power cycle the modem first, of course, which is what we always do. Okay. Where where do I buy that um, fake Velcro you talked about? Okay, I'm glad you reminded me of that. Let me get over to that and we will show you. So this is a kind of a secret amongst uh, techie people. There's this company called Monoprice. Monoprice, M O. N O P R I C E monoprice.com. So I was um, using this for some of my research. So here's my, my shopping cart from Monoprice. And I was going to mention uh, lightning cables, of course, is what you use with your modern iPhones and iPads. And they have um, Apple MFI, which means they're Apple certified. MFI is made for iPhone. So they're, they're certified. So here is a, I think everybody should have at least one 10 foot lightning cable, especially when you start to travel again. So here's uh, two 10 foot lightning cables, one in the pretty red, one in black. And they are twelve forty-seven and nine ninety-nine, respectively. So, uh, an, another good thing about Monoprice, besides the fact that their prices are very reasonable, is their cables have a lifetime guarantee. And I have sent cables back, Lightning cables, exactly the type that I sent back, and they replaced it. So I know that not only do they say they have a lifetime guarantee, they back it up. Here's the um, label maker, and it is $27. And they do have the supplies for that um, someplace. Uh, here's the Velcro. Now, it's on sale right now. So let's see if we refresh this page. And it's still on sale because I think I got an email today that the um, sale was over yesterday. Let's see, I can't see my refresh button. So I'm looking in the menu for a refresh button. I never used Command the R. Command R, thank you, Bob. <laughs> Love those key keyboard commands. Okay, so it's still on sale. So if you want some hook and loop fastening, five yards, you can have it in black. You can have it in blue, but it's more expensive. You can have it in green, more expensive. 
you can have it in my favorite color, red, or you can get a deal on the white for only a dollar twenty-six. Now, if you buy um, a couple of cables and get your total up to thirty-nine dollars, you get free shipping. So, uh, and you know, it's always good to have a spare lightning cable, and again. I heartily recommend a 10 foot lightning cable if you don't have one, because sometimes those six footers are just too short. Okay, well, thank you for attending. I hope that you have um, any um, of your questions about connectors that you should keep attached to those cables answered. And now you know where to take them. Tell them Roger sent you, and I have to run now and get my teeth cleaned. So <laughs> join us next week. Same bat time, same bat station. If you have any questions, hey, Roger, I got a uh, Dymo label. Uh, oh, look at here that, that, Bob! I can donate. Oh, I think I have... have the uh, I have the gun too, but it's at the bottom of the drawer. Oh, okay. So you're gonna put you're gonna put that up for auction. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, the first person who shows up gets it. Okay, so if you'd like to have a scenic trip to Vail, Bob will fix you up with a Dynamo labeler. Okay, thanks everybody. Take thanks, care. Roger. Thank you, Roger.